Hey everybody, this is Dave Dugdale, SolarDave.com. Today I'm asking John Shaw of Bell Energy, what is the Excel Energy 120% rule? Um, all right, so they've always had this 120% rule, but they really hadn't been enforcing it in residential scenarios. Um, and they, they essentially, originally, it's my understanding that they didn't want um, a company who only needed 20 kilowatts to put 100 kilowatts on their roof and, and overproduce by 400%. Um, from, the, from, from Excel's perspective, that company would then be in competition with them as, a, as, a, as an energy provider because they're making so much. Anyway, so apparently their motivation was not to create a, a, a solar market in their territory that gave incentive to people to compete with them to produce power. So they're okay with you making your own power. And how much is based on history. And they probably arbitrarily came up with 20% extra. We'll let you put a system on that covers 20% more than what your historical usage says you would need. Recently, they've started to become sticklers uh, in the residential market for that. Um, and it's particularly frustrating because now they have announced a, a schedule for ratcheting down their incentives in the under 10 kilowatt market. And the means by which they say to you, sorry, you've designed a system that is 121% of your historical use, is to reject your application. Well, what we found happen is um, they've rejected the application. And because of the timing of the rejection, by accident, the person got into a, it, had to, into a lower rebate category. And you know that person then is not happy with anybody, neither us nor Excel. So it's really a pain in the butt. But the PUC, the PUC let them you know, make that rule. And so it is their rule. Uh, if you're going to do an elect, I had a customer who bought a nine kilowatt system. Their historical usage suggested they needed only like a six and a half kilowatt system. However, it was uh, a newly combined family. So it was two people in the house, now it's four. And they remodeled it uh, by adding 1,500 square feet to the place. So they doubled the people in the place and they added 30%, 33% more square footage. Well, they, Excel originally rejected their application. And you know, I, we, we have to maintain a cordial relationship with Excel. So in a, in a patient and polite way, we said, you know, what the heck's going on? <laughs> and ultimately, the, the owner just had to write a letter and you know, essentially prove or put on paper that they had increased the size of the family and were increasing the square footage of the home. And then Excel allowed it. So if somebody wants to plan on adding enough PV to manage, handle, take care of the increased usage of electricity due to an electric car that they want to plug in, then my suggestion would be buy the car first and submit the invoice for the car to Excel with your application requesting a system over 120%. I mean, when we do these applications, they have notes fields and they have, there's, they give us the ability to attach, you know, uh, interesting or extraordinary circumstances or notes or you know FYIs and stuff. And so if I had a customer who you know uh, really only needed five kilowatts based on historical usage but wanted to buy seven kilowatts because you're going to get an electric car, then I'd say, well, we're, what you really need to do is buy the car. Give me the invoice. I'll submit that invoice with the uh, application, and I think they'll be fine with it. Problem is, is I don't think they're going to let you do that seven kilowatt um, on your house if you only needed five kilowatts without having bought the car first. Because then anybody and their brother can say, yeah, I'm going to buy a car. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I mean, we would like to trust people, but on a, on a corporate basis, they're not going to trust that we're telling the truth about buying the car in the next six weeks or whatever. So.